Welcome back. So today we'll be doing the part two of the account confirmation and password recovery in ASP.NET Core. So this tutorial is built on the part one. So please do visit part one before coming back to this part. So to, in the learning today, we will first implement the I email sender interface, which we introduced in the first um, so we'll also configure startup to support email and run the web app test and account test the account confirmation password recovery flow and test password reset so let's get back to the slideshow so to implement i email sender interface in the services folder create an email sender.cs file and write the code for the email sender class as per the code in the document URL at this link. So this link will also be there in the description. So please watch out. I am going to implement the I email sender in this um, tutorial. So um, I have got the code and I will copy it on this project. So I have already created this services folder and I have created this email sender class. Right. And I have written, I have created this class email sender, which implements I email sender interface. And there is a public constructor which takes I options, auth message sender options. And this is that class within the services folder, which has got two public properties, send grid user and send grid key. Both are string, okay? So, options equals options accessor dot value. Now for this op options is a type, but it's used like a variable. Now soon I will tell you um, why the problem is coming, because I have to still declare what is options, okay? public auth message sender options this is options and get it gets its read only and it is set only via secret manager which we will talk later okay So now you can see that that squiggle line is no more and so we are ready to code further and the next line is public task I will create a send email async async task and it will take email subject and message as strings and return execute so execute is another task uh, another method that returns a task. So just follow me in typing. So public task send email async string email string subject string message and within the body of this method I'll just return execute execute method and this execute method takes an api key a subject a message and an email and it is yet to be created okay so first of all let me actually build the body let me build the um, that call that execute method and then we'll sort it out uh, 
so execute options dot send grid key and then an options is this object auth message sender options subject and then that is the passed arguments message and finally email okay right now i will write the execute method so if you click on over here you can see the light bulb icon it will create generate the method email sender dot execute for you and you get rid of this part throw new not implemented exception and you'll be all right but i'll have to still write the body of this execute method so i'll declare a var client equals new send grid client and let's see what it does it initializes a new instance of the send grid client class and it takes four overloads and i'll have to give just one api key so this one will be api key and i'll use this api key over here api key all right so it will return a send grid client object and it accepts a string api key in the next line it will be var again message var msg equals new send grid message class i will uh, create an instance of send grid message class and within the body of this message var you just put a semicolon over there to close the sentence terminate the code from equals now this from i'll just come back to it in a minute from equals new um, email address yeah prompted and within this email address there are two instances uh, there are two overloads it initializes a new instance of the email address class so the first is um, empty but i will take this email and then name all right so we'll see any email address valid email address say joe as per this documentation that i am following joe at contoso.com dot com with a comma and let's write the name as a fictitious joe smith and then after from you can see there is a subject uh, this one so it is send grid message class and from new email address joe at contoso.com and joe smith i think it will be separated by comma not semicolon so here it will be subject yes subject equals subject passed on parameter subject and then again comma and then plain text content plain text content equals the it is uh, the message it is assigned the message parameter all right so plain text context content is the message and again comma 
and HTML content is also message. Right. And then message dot add to I'm calling this message variable message dot there is a add to method add to and what it does add a recipient email add to new email address new email address and pass what that is the email address email which we received from the argument to this method right and then we will call another method set click tracking and this is actually disabling click tracking so i will just put a um, link to the article that you can see for what what about you know click tracking what does it mean so let me copy it from my clipboard now in the past for those of my subscribers or my regular viewers who have followed all my asp.net core articles you know videos on the youtube you might have noticed that this is the first time that i am actually writing the code from the documentation live rather than copying and pasting and then explaining and this is actually why i'm doing it just to show how much time it takes in actually copying it and that time could probably be utilized in uh, you know just explaining the things and making the tutorial really short so that you can watch through the whole but anyway so one of my subscribers asked that you know why i don't write the code live you know rather than to copy and paste and trying to explain so i just wanted to show you how much time is uh, spent in this anyway so message dot set click tracking so let's see what it does sets the click tracking setting allows you to track whether this recipient clicked the link in your email all right yeah okay that's it sounds uh, um, logical it sounds uh, pretty uh, straightforward so click tracking false enable and enable text enable text indicates if this setting should be in included in the text then no again false so once false so you have disabled it so enable text is also false okay and then i'll return this client dot send email async send email async what does it do it is awaitable it makes a request to send an email through Twilio send grid asynchronously okay Twilio so you need to read about this to you know know more about what is Twilio Twilio send grid okay so this part is also over I have written the code for execute method and I think that's it so let's uh, build the program application control shift B So now you see that the build has completed and succeeded. Okay, so we'll move to the next part. Now, after having um, implemented I email sender interface, we'll add the following code to the configure service method in the startup file. And we'll add an email sender as a transient service and register the auth message sender options configuration instance. And then we'll add the code uh, in the startup class as follows. So basically it is services.addTransient. 
will pass i email sender and email sender and then we will configure the auth message sender options uh, by passing a configuration object after the um, auth message sender options within triangular brackets. So let's flip over to Visual uh, Studio and do the coding. Okay, so there we have got this startup class open and I've got this previously written code. Now below this we'll write the comments first. So it requires using Microsoft dot ASP.NET Core dot identity dot UI dot services and also using web pw recover dot services folder this project dot services folder so let's use them first of all using statement so copy on top using after the last using statement uh, sorry that's not what I meant and using web pw recover dot services Okay, so I'll now write the code. At the moment, it is telling that using directive is unnecessary, so ignore it because I will. It will be all right when I add the code. So services dot add add transient basically add transient and. I email sender and email sender. So what does it do? It adds a transient service of the type specified in T service with an implementation type specified in T implementation to the specified I service collection. Okay, so T implementation is a type of implementation to use. Right. At the moment, we'll not go deep into what the transient service does, but we'll take it in a later section, later lecture. Okay. So services dot configure and within that configure extension method, it will pass auth message sender options class. and a configuration configuration so this is this return this is of i configuration class i configuration interface startup dot configuration okay uh, and then terminate this code Right, so this is done and then we'll do register confirm email and reset password. Now is the time to run the web app. So let's first build it. The 
stick a wee bit okay so I think uh, UI dot service okay so these two names for some reasons already there so I don't need them anywhere right now let's run the application control f5 so the application is now running so now i will click the register link and register a new account okay so krc1 So register is, registration is confirmed. Now I'll have to check my email to confirm my account. So I'll open this email address, extra email address. Voila, I have got this email confirmation email please confirm your account by clicking here so i click there pop-up is blocked so i open in a new so getting back to the slideshow run the app and register check your email for account confirmation link so i have al already checked my email and i've got the confirmation link click i have clicked the link sign in with your email and password so that's what i am going to do now so login with my email address which i have recently registered with the password click on login wow so it is i have already logged in and it is telling me log out so superb now next thing is getting back to the slideshow again now i will sign out and then i will test the password reset okay so get log out and then how do i test the password reset by clicking this link forgot your password okay so that is in line with what I said. Select logout, which I did. Select the login link and select the forgot your password link. So forgot your password link. Enter the email that I have registered. krchuman at extra dot co dot nz. Reset password. And again, please check your email to reset your password. Okay, let me refresh. Yeah, so reset my password, great. So I just click on this link to reset my password. Open link in a new tab. See, I can, I have got the reset password page so my email address is this and my uh, new password is let me make a new password so this time it is a different password okay so password reset conf conf confirmation so click here to log in with the new password and I should be able to log in with the new password 
So in this tutorial, we have started from this learning outcome and uh, we have already implemented I email sender interface and we have configured the startup to support email. We have run the web app, test the account confirmation and password recovery flow and test the password reset. Thank you.